2023 is going to be an epic year of racing, and I'm here to tell you everything you need to know about the new LMDH cars. The LMH, which is the Le Mans hypercar, and LMDH, which is the Le Mans Daytona hybrid cars, are replacing LMP1 cars and the DPI cars, which were the Daytona prototype international cars. And there are some significant changes happening. The cars are quite a bit heavier, and they have a lot less power. So how exactly could this be a good thing, you ask? Well, you see, LMP1 costs were spiraling out of control, and most manufacturers were pulling out of LMP1. It was rumored that Porsche's campaign and Toyota's campaign were costing over $200 million a season. This is more than what it costs to run an F1 team. Now, I know there have been some rumors going around that the bank is no longer funding us. Well, I am here to put those rumors to rest. They are true. Uh -oh. In terms of money, we have no money. LMP1 racing was some of the craziest racing you could have ever seen. With a thousand plus horsepower hybrid cars weighing next to nothing, setting blazing fast lap times, it was almost too good to be true. And of course it was. Because with those record-setting times came record-high costs to run the teams. In the end, Toyota was the only manufacturer left in the game alongside some privateers. LMP1 racing as we knew it was dying and something needed to change. The WEC, ACO, and IMSA all came together over the last couple of years to draft up ideas to make classes that would truly be able to compete on a global scale. How amazing would it be to see Cadillacs and Acuras at the 24 Hours of Le Mans and to see Peugeot, Ferrari, and Toyota at the Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona. Rule sets were drafted and it was the intention to make LMH and LMDH classing very similar. However, still have differences in case manufacturers wanted more control. Some of the rules that are in place for both classes are a minimum weight of 1,030 kilograms and a maximum horsepower of 671. This is significantly different than LMP1, as they were allowed practically as much horsepower as they wanted and a minimum weight of 833 kilograms for non-hybrid cars and 878 kilograms for the hybrid cars. So now there are some differences between LMH and LMDH cars. LMH cars are completely up to the manufacturer to build all the components of the car, such as the chassis, suspension, engine, and shell. And they must have at least 25 production cars that run the same engine and energy recovery system as their race car. This move was a big blow to constructors such as Liget, Delara, and Orica, as they aren't in the business of manufacturing production cars, so they cannot build LMH cars. But don't worry about these guys just yet, because this is where the rules save the day for those smaller companies. All LMDH cars must run a chassis provided by four approved chassis constructors. And of course, they are those little guys just mentioned, none other than Orica, Delara, Riley Multimatic, and Liget. You are allowed to select whichever engine you would like, but all the cars get the same X-Trax sequential seven speed that works with a Bosch motor generator unit. These cars also don't have starters and we have grown to love what they refer to as bump starting the cars. That's when they take off in full electric and bump start the engine. Here, have a listen so you know what I'm talking about. Go ahead, set it. I'm not going to lie, guys. I don't think that will ever get old to me. That's got to be like the most amazing thing in the world. LMDH racing is said to be approximately 80% cheaper than LMP1. And for this reason, we have manufacturers lining up to join LMH and LMDH. In LMH, we already have Toyota and Peugeot and Ferrari is already testing their 499p LMH car. I was actually down at Sebring, Florida just a week ago and the 499p was there testing while I was there. It's rumored that Aston Martin could potentially join LMH2. On the LMDH side, we have Porsche, Cadillac, Acura, and BMW that actually just had their debut at Daytona last week. It's also possible that Lamborghini, McLaren, and Bentley might want to join that party too. 
Aside from those companies, there's also rumors floating around that Nissan and Mazda might want a piece of the pie as well. Imagine what the grids could look like over the next few years. Anyways, let's go over all the LMDH cars that already made their debut last weekend at Daytona. To kick things off, we have the Porsche 963. Porsche chose Riley Multimatic as their chassis builder, and the motor of choice is a 4.6 liter V8 twin turbo, which is derived from Porsche's hypercar, the 918. Porsche has teamed up with Penske Motorsport, and they are campaigning two cars this season. Roger Penske's lifelong dream is to win Le Mans, and he's hoping that the Porsche cars are the ones to do it. Acura has teamed up with Meyer Shank Racing and Wayne Taylor Racing, and they are running the number 10 and number 60 car. The cars are called an ARX 06, and Team Acura has already been off to a blazing start this year. They just cleaned house at the 24 hours at Daytona, where they had an impressive first and second place finish. These Acura cars are powered by a 2.4 liter V6 twin turbo engine known as the AR24E, and they revved to 10,000 RPM. And their chassis builder of choice was Orica. Cadillac is campaigning three cars this year, two with Chip Ganassi Racing and one with Action Express. The cars are called VLMDH, obviously paying tribute to Cadillac's V lineup of street machines. Cadillac chose Delara as their chassis builder of choice and they found themselves on the podium in third place this past weekend at Daytona. Cadillac is also pretty unique in this class because they're the only ones with a naturally aspirated motor. They chose to run a 5.5 liter V8 where all the other LMDH cars are twin turbo. BMW makes a return to prototype racing after a 24 year hiatus and the chassis is built by Delara. The engine is a four liter V8 twin turbo and BMW has teamed up with RLL to campaign two cars all season long. Now both LMDH and LMH cars have clearance to run in each other's campaigns. And what I mean by that is the LMDH cars of North America are cleared to run in the 24 hour of Le Mans overseas, as much as the LMH cars, the Toyota and the Peugeot and the Ferrari next year are cleared to be running an LMDH competition over here in North America with IMSA. This is going to lead to massive fields and some of the best racing that we will probably ever witness in our history. Imagine how big the grids are gonna be when you have the likes of Nissan, Honda, Acura, Mazda, Bentley, possibly Bugatti, Lamborghini, and everyone else chomping at the bit to get involved in prototype racing because it's once again been made affordable. Now I use the word affordable in context to manufacturers that have millions and billions of dollars. And what I mean by that is once again, talking about the cost to run LMP1 were approximately $200 million or more than $200 million a season. And they are trying to aim a goal of $30 million a season to run LMH or LMDH cars. Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video today. If you have, make sure to please take a second out of your day and hit that like button. That's the thumbs up. And please consider subscribing to my small channel where I'm going to continue to bring you guys amazing content such as this. Thanks, everyone. And we'll catch you all in the next one.